we're, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, and then I'm going to get into some of the products. But before I do, I'm going to give you an acronym list, and I will encourage you to get out your phone and take a picture of it, because I speak in acronyms without meaning to. It's an occupational hazard, right? Even our customer's name is, is an acronym. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. So I can't get away from them. And then I'm going to talk most about the spacesuit because that's my project and that's my passion. So if you ask me questions about the other products, I'll try to answer them. But honestly, I'm going to skim over them to get to the good stuff. Any objections? No. Yes, love it. All right, I graduated from the University of Texas at Austin. I am a Texan, born and raised. I lived in some other states for a while, but I got back here as quick as I could. My master's degree is in material science and engineering from the Uni University of North Texas. Does anybody know which city that's in? Denton. Just, yeah, <laughs> David's pointing up. Yes, just north of Fort Worth, so it's pretty far up there. So I did start my career at Raytheon, worked on some pretty cool projects, including the eyeball for the Predator drone. Yeah, that's the multi-spectral targeting system, the MTS. I told you there's going to be a lot of acronyms. And the MTS, I worked on variants A, B, C, and briefly touched D. So that was a pretty cool project. Uh, I worked on some big satellites at North of Grumman, and that's where I really got into space. And then I came home to Houston, and I'm working on the next spacesuit. Been doing that for the last three years now. All right, I'm not going to read all of that to you. I will say that I'm an innovator. I have multiple patents pending. I love to innovate. And I have a picture of me there with the interns because I love to speak to students such as yourself. All right, you ready to take a picture? <laughs> I know, it's a long list of acronyms, and I try to define them every time I say them. But as you can imagine, that gets a little cumbersome. So I speak in acronyms, for, uh, forgive me in advance. The most important ones on here might be EVA, extravehicular activity. When I say EVA, think spacewalk. All right, and if I say EMU, extra, extra mobility unit, that is a spacesuit. So EMU, think spacesuit, right? Now we're making the next EMU, and that is the next generation of spacesuits. That's Colin's names for it. Now NASA calls it the X EMU, just to let you know if you see that. And our competitor calls theirs the A X EMU, because they're axiom. You don't have an MAG out there? I don't have which one? MAG, Maximum Absorbency Garment. Ah, yes. Do you all know what the MAG is, the MAG? That's the diaper that the astronauts wear. <laughs> because once they get buttoned into that spacesuit, they're there for eight hours or more. And there's no way that they could wipe anything inside that spacesuit, right? So, yes. And that MAG can take as much water as is in the drink bag, 32 milliliters. Fun fact. <laughs> Thank you, David. Now, we are in a very exciting time because in the past, NASA was the only customer for the spacesuit. But we're moving towards privatization of space, commercialization of space. And that's very exciting because that means that pretty soon there'll be more than one space station and there'll be space tourism and we'll be able to buy tickets <clears throat> once we reach a million dollars in our bank account, right? So it, this affects so much and it's, it's so exciting because in the past, NASA wrote the specifications for everything that we made, right? They told us how many seals had to be on each widget. They told us um, whether we could use zippers or buttons or they told us which materials we could use. But with privatization, we get to choose all that. With privatization, we need to think more about maintenance and how things are going to be fixed because it's going to be on our dime if we're renting spacesuits to the customer instead of selling them. Think about renting a car, right? If you own the car, you're responsible for the oil changes and replacing the tires and all the things, right? That's NASA's been owning the car in the past. Now they're renting the car from us. Collins rent a suit and we're responsible for all the maintenance. So there's a shift in our design thinking even. So it's interesting to see from an engineering perspective how that changes things. 
and we get to decide how many seals are going to be on the spacesuit now. Well, we, why did NASA want three seals? Is two going to be enough? What if we made one really good seal and then did something else over that? These are the kind of design, design questions that we're asking ourselves. Now, Collins makes a lot more than just spacesuits. And like I said, I'm going to skim over these just so that you know that there's a lot more to the world, right?